Years ago, an S-4 submarine was rammed by a ship off the coast of Massachusetts. It sank immediately. The entire crew was trapped in a prison house of death. Every effort was made to rescue the crew, but all ultimately failed. Near the end of the ordeal, a deep-sea diver, who was doing everything in his power to find a way for the crew's release, he thought he heard a tapping on the steel wall of the sunken sub. He placed his helmet up against the side of the vessel, and he realized it was Morse code. He attached himself to the side, and he spelled out in his mind the message being tapped from within. It was repeating the same question. Is there any hope? Is there any hope? And some of you may be asking that same question. As you try to live in the crazy circumstances surrounding us at this moment, or maybe as you pray fervently over your wayward son or daughter, or maybe as you look at those who are making decisions affecting you, and you wonder, do they really know what they are doing? Or as you deal with the emptiness of losing a loved one, as you deal with the burden of not being able to see your children or grandchildren, as you ponder your job situation or your lack of a job, as you stare down the reality of an empty bank account, as you face isolation weeks on end, wondering if your friends have forgotten you, or maybe as a child, as you sit there and struggle with the uncertain future of your parents' marriage. But as you look at the craziness that is happening in our world right now, you begin to wonder. I know people are wondering this. People are wondering, is there any hope? I read a post that was written not too long ago by a young man named Chad. And I want you to hear the heartfelt brokenness inside of this young man. He wrote, I am broken. I can't take anymore. My heart cries out to God, but he is silent. My faith and trust are broken. Doubt, confusion, and worry fill my head. I don't know what to do. I am overwhelmed. I will be homeless in a week. I have nowhere to go and no money to move. I am drowning in debt. I need help. Please pray for me. As my pastor used to always say, you can live 40 days without food, eight days without water, five minutes without air, but you cannot live one second without hope. There's a story about a man named Nick Sitzman. He was a strong young man. He worked on a train crew. And one midsummer day, the train crew was informed that they could leave work an hour early in honor of the foreman's birthday. And after everyone left the site, Nick found himself locked inside a refrigerator boxcar. He yelled and he screamed, but to no avail. The next morning, the crew slid open the heavy doors of the boxcar and they found Nick Sitzman dead. An autopsy revealed that every physical sign of his body indicated that he had frozen to death, yet the refrigerator unit of the car had stopped working and the temperature never reached below 50 degrees. But Nick had come to believe that his circumstances were hopeless. Let me ask you, what leads to hopelessness? There's a couple things that lead to hopelessness, and you may want to write these down. The first one is feeling like nothing will ever change. 
feeling like you can't get out of your present circumstances, that there's no way out, that you're drowning. The second reason hopelessness sets in is that that is when unmet expectations sink in. When you think something should happen, that doesn't happen. And I'm telling you, both of these lead to discouragement, and they lead to defeat, and they lead to depression, and sometimes even death. And even for a child of God, if you read any of King David's Psalms for any length of time, you will realize that in many of them, David battled depression. And if you read the account of Elijah, he became so discouraged that he asked the Lord to take his life. David, Elijah, and many others in Scripture face these great weapons of the enemy, and maybe you have faced those as well. I was talking to a person not too long ago who was going through an emotionally heavy time, and the Holy Spirit gave me these words to say to that person. Listen carefully because these may be for you. Don't ever get to the point in your life where you think there is no hope. Listen, there is always hope. Always hope. There are always people who love you. There is always tomorrow. And circumstances can change tomorrow. And there is always Jesus. Do you know what the Bible says about Jesus and hope? Listen to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. It says, This letter is from Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, appointed by the command of God, our Savior, and Christ Jesus, who gives us hope. Jesus Christ gives us hope. Do you know why he gives us hope? Because Jesus is hope, and there is no hope without him, and there is abundant, overflowing hope with him. Listen to Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Paul writes and he says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. He writes in Romans and he says that Jesus is the source of of hope, and he fills us with confident hope that overflows through the power of the Holy Spirit. What a precious promise that we have because of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are three things that I want to share with you in this moment to bring hope to your heart, to your weary heart. I want to give you some hope right now. The first one is this. If Jesus is our hope, we have hope from our past failures. We have hope from our past failures. If you're a Christ follower, the Holy Spirit of God living on the inside of you, you are now living in a right, reconciled relationship with God at this very moment. At this very moment. That is your status before God. The devil does not want you to know that. The devil wants you to dwell on your past mistakes and keep you from understanding your true identity in Christ. Let me just say this. There is a difference between condemnation and conviction. Condemnation is from the devil, and it's meant just to do that. Condemn. It accompanies guilt and shame and regret, and it is never from the Lord. Never. Conviction, on the other hand, is always from the Holy Spirit. He convicts you about the things that are not surrendered to him so that you can surrender to him and now be in a place of blessing because there is blessing when it comes to obedience. But anything the Holy Spirit does is for our good and anything that the devil does for you is for your demise. Don't ever confuse the two of those things. As a matter of fact, if you are a Christ follower, I want to tell you some things about your new identity 
And I just want us to shout with joy when we get finished with this, okay? You are God's child. You are now justified before God. You are a friend of Jesus. You belong to God. You are a member of Christ's body. You have been established and anointed and sealed by God. You are a citizen of heaven. I read that this morning, Philippians 3.20. You are a citizen of heaven. You are blessed in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. You are holy and blameless before God. You are an adopted child of God. You are completely forgiven, completely forgiven, past, present, and future. You have purpose. You are sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. You are a saint. You say, I don't feel like a saint. It doesn't matter what you feel like. The Bible declares that in Jesus Christ, we are saints of the living God. You are God's co-worker. You are a minister of reconciliation. You are alive with Christ. Once you were dead in your sins, but now you are alive with Christ. You are seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. The Bible says with all principalities and powers underneath your feet, you are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. You have been brought near to God through Christ's blood. You have peace with God, which passes all understanding, and you have access to the Father right now. You are a member of God's household. You are secure because of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are a holy temple. Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that you are a holy temple unto God a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit, taking up residence and your, in your life, and you share in the promises of Christ Jesus. God's power works through you. Works through you, not just the pastor. He works through you. Uh, you are now dead to sin. It says in Romans chapter 1, dead to sin. Romans 6, you are dead to sin. You are not alone. Uh, you possess the mind of Christ. You are more than a conqueror. You are no longer condemned. You are born again. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, you are a new creation. You are victorious. You are victorious. Can we just give the Lord a round of applause knowing that is who we are right now in the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe we can. Let's just thank the Lord for that. You know, the Bible declares this over you if you have trusted in Christ to save you, and that is not even an exhaustive list. But praise God that Jesus has taken that sin upon himself, and he has taken God's wrath upon himself, and he has declared all who trust in him to be right with God, right now, no longer counted as an enemy of God, but as a friend of God, a friend of God. And this is the message that God has given to us and given us the task of sharing with every single person around us. Jesus brings hope to your past failures, your present failures, and your future failures because Jesus paid it all. Don't you love that song? Let's just sing it together. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sing it out. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. He did. Listen, share it with the devil as well. When he reminds you of your past, you remind him of his future. You have hope because your past, present, and future have been washed and are underneath the Lord Jesus Christ. If Jesus is our hope, listen, we also, number two, have hope for our present circumstances. Let me ask you, just think about this. Is there anything that is too hard 
for the Lord? No. The Bible declares that he is mighty to save. Listen to Jeremiah chapter 10, 10 through 16. It says, but the Lord is the only true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. The whole earth trembles at his anger. The nations cannot stand up to his wrath. Say this to those who worship other gods. Your so-called gods who did not make the heavens and the earth will vanish from the earth and from under the heavens. Verse 12. But the Lord made the earth by his power and he preserves it by his wisdom. With his own understanding, he stretched out the heavens, verse 13, when he speaks in the thunder, the heavens roar with rain. He causes the clouds to rise over the earth. He sends the lightning with the rain and releases the wind from the storehouses. The whole human race is foolish and has no knowledge. The craftsmen are disgraced by the idols that they make, for their carefully shaped works are a fraud. These idols have no breath or no power. Verse 15, idols are worthless. They are ridiculous lies. On the day of reckoning, they will all be destroyed. But the God of Israel is no idol. Amen? He is the creator of everything that exists, including Israel, his own special possession. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. Wow, what a powerful passage. The God we serve is the powerful, almighty God. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. Do you know in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, it says this, Jesus looked at them and said these words, With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Someone has said that the phrase, fear not, is found in the Bible 365 times, one for each day. Now, I don't know if that's true. I've never looked it up, but I do know that it's said a lot throughout Scripture. But what a wonderful understanding the term fear not over and over again, because we have a tendency to be afraid. But listen, if God is the all-powerful, almighty God, the Lord of heaven's armies, he is big enough to handle whatever circumstances you are facing, correct? So I would just say, turn to him and trust him. And if Jesus Christ is your hope, then you can have hope in your present circumstances, no matter what you are going through. That is good news for us listening right now. Thirdly, if Jesus Christ is our hope, we have hope for our future inheritance. Do you know that there's over 200 references in the New Testament referring to Jesus's second coming? The early church lived with a red hot fervency for the return of Jesus. They believed and lived as if this world was not their home. They lived for the life to come. Why? Because Jesus promised them a hope for heaven, and they believed it. They had nothing on this earth. They couldn't wait to get to heaven. You know, I try to teach my children about heaven throughout the year. We celebrate the reality of heaven and talk about what heaven is going to be like at a date in late September or early October. We eat heaven food. You say, well, what's heaven food? It's everybody's favorite, and we just pretend it won't get stuck around your waist, okay? We get new clothing symbolizing the new bodies that we will receive, and we sleep out in a tent in the backyard. We want to make this the, the most fun time for our children, and everything we do with our kids that night is intentional about teaching them about heaven. Listen to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. It says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 
and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Praise God. And if Jesus Christ is our our hope, our future hope is secure. Heaven is a reality that is waiting to happen. You know, we can have hope for yesterday with all of its past mistakes and regrets. We can have hope for today with all of its trials and uncertainties. And we can have hope for tomorrow, knowing as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ that he is coming back for his beloved. Amen. Listen, the Bible says, encourage each other. Encourage each other with these words. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, but encourage each other as you see the day approaching. Everything that's going on on around us should remind us that the day is approaching. The day is approaching. And so I want to encourage you to live with hope. Live with hope that your past has been taken care of. Live with hope that your present circumstances are nothing compared to the powerful, awesome, almighty God that we serve. And live with hope knowing that your future is secure as a Christ follower. We are citizens of heaven. We are not citizens right now of this earth so much. We are citizens of heaven. Let your heart gravitate towards that. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for this moment. I thank you, Lord, that we are not living on on this earth as people with no hope. Lord, I praise you and I thank you that we can have abundant hope. Abundant hope. You say, well, Pastor Matt, have you you been watching what's going on around us? I'm, I'm starting to feel hopeless. Listen, Jesus Christ is the one that we need to be keeping our eyes on, not our circumstances, not anything that's going on around us, but Jesus Christ, who is our blessed hope. You put your eyes on him and you dwell on him. So God, I thank you uh, for this moment right now. I thank you that you're ordaining all circumstances and God, that there is nothing that is too strong for you or too powerful for you to bear. And so, Jesus, we love you, and we thank you, God, that you're real. We thank you, Lord, that you are listening, and we thank you, God, that you're available and that you are near to us. So we worship you, and we praise you. Some of you listening right now, you've never asked Jesus to be your your hope. You've never found your hope to be in Jesus. You, you, you've struggled, and you're looking for hope in, in every other thing. And now that every other thing has been taken away, you're just wondering, well, what do I put it in next? Listen, Jesus Christ is the constant anchor that will never fail you. He will never fail you. And so I just encourage you right now, I believe God is orchestrating all these circumstances to get people to look towards heaven and say, God, I have nowhere else to go, but Lord, I'm looking to you. So would you look to Jesus right now? Would you just say, Jesus, I have nowhere else to go? But Lord, if you're if you're reaching out to me, if, you, if you're calling out to me, then God, I want to be saved. Would you save me? Lord, I don't deserve to be saved, but but would you save me? Would you come into my life and make me the person that you want me to be? God, I just trust you. And I just thank you, Lord, for saving me. Just say that. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. So God, I, I just thank you for the wonderful gift of salvation. And I pray, Lord, that many people would put their hope and trust in you right now in Jesus name amen well let me do this let's um now oh, man what what awesome truth right let's let's talk about this let's break this down so maybe you're with your family or maybe you're there with a small group of people but uh, let me ask you this first question has there ever been a circumstance in your life where you felt like you were in a hopeless situation and if so what was that situation like and how did you come out of that situation? So you can talk about that right now. You know, when we talk about Jesus giving us hope 
for our past circumstances. When we talk about Jesus giving our hope, uh, giving us hope for our present situation, he's present in our situation right now. And when we talk about Jesus giving us hope for the future, for what is to come, let me ask you, which one of these really brings and resonates with you and gives you the most hope as you think about it? Maybe some of you, your past is so deep. And some of you, maybe your present situation is so unbelievably hard, what you're dealing with. Or maybe some of you, you're, you're you just think about your future and you're afraid and you say, I long for heaven. So talk about these. Which one of these that I mentioned giving you hope, which one brings the most hope to your heart right now? Here's the third question that I want to ask you. Who do you know in your life, in your neighborhood that needs a phone call, that needs a text, that needs a, an instant message, that needs a video message? Who do you know right now that needs hope? That needs hope. Who do you know right now that's suffering? Who do you know that's afraid? Who do you know that's hurting? Who do you know that needs a word of encouragement? Who do you need to bring hope to? And it may be your spouse and it may be your children. It may be that you need to go knock on doors and just say, how are you? How can I pray for you? My wife and I are planning on, we've made a, uh, notes and uh, we've wrapped them in toilet paper and we're putting candy in that we're going to go and just give these to our neighbors with our phone numbers just to say hey we're here how can we pray for you we want you to know that we're available to you for whatever you need and i think this is the time for the church to be able to do this and so let me ask you what are ways or who do you know right now that needs hope in in their present circumstances so you talk about that right now well, isn't it great that we can focus on the Word of God? And I want to encourage you, everything that I share with you, I want you to begin teaching other people, okay? I don't want you just to absorb this and say, well, I'm glad that I got this. No, I want you to find somebody that needs to be discipled, needs truth, and say, hey, let me just share with you what I learned this week. And so you be able to do that. Be a conduit of God's power, be a conduit of God's grace and the gospel message. So I'm just praying uh, that, that you would be the hands and the feet of Jesus this week. So you do that, and you love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. God bless you. Thank you for listening.